for it. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julie Mann and I show people how they can live healthy, happy, sustainable lives by changing their habits and using cutting edge products to help them age well. And I'm really delighted because I'm joined today by a business coach and mentor and his name is Sam Sharma. Hi Sam. Hey Julie, thanks for having me today. Pleasure. I'm really looking forward to hear your habits, which I believe are six figure habits. So I'm going to hand straight over to you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Julie. Uh, so just to give a little introduction, guys, I am a, a creator of six figure business owners, solopreneurs who are trying to design, live by their calling and want to know how to build their businesses in a holistic manner without compromising on their own mental health. That's what I do. I connect the human psychology with strategies and technology to bring it together. So you get to six figure mark. Now, in order to preach that or to teach that, I am really well versed that I need to practice this upon myself, master it, and then I can share this with you. So everything that I'm going to tell you, I actually do it. So it kind of flows through me more naturally. Uh, the first thing I will say to you is like goal setting is pretty big out there. But for me, kind of goal setting got bored. And I started to realize that setting goals was actually burning me out. So it became more about like, who do I want to be? Standards. What standards can I set for myself that allows me to hit those goals again and again and again? That's really big in terms of, uh, so who do you want to be rather than what you want to do? And that is, a, that is a habit in its own self because every morning and every night, I finish my day and night kind of going into the repeated affirmations of who am I becoming or how do I want to show up to life? You know, and that that in itself plays its own massive part. Um, it plays big part in money because uh, earning six figures, it may look like, oh, it's only six figures. It's not. It's actually hitting 10K plus every single month as you go forward and then rinsing and repeating it on another business and make taking that to a six figure and another business. So one thing I will say to you is people come up with, with these numbers of what's my minimum survival budget. So when you were in a job, you had that minimum income coming in and that income allowed you to survive on a minimum survival budget, so to speak. Yeah, But then you come into a business and suddenly you have a great month. That's like your best month ever. You never, ever earned that much before. And that's where the first shift starts in your brain. You start to think, well, actually, if my if my best month ever becomes my minimum survival budget, straight away I've broken a paradigm that was about my earning potential has gone to another level. Well, the first place to break that paradigm is in your mind itself. So affirmations of how you're attracting money, how your potential of earning is becoming bigger and bigger is by telling yourself that, that you are a money magnet. You are attracting more and more clients. You are serving very powerfully out there. You're creating massive value for people out there. And in exchange of that value, they are swapping it with money, which is one value against other value, right? So the more value I create, the more value I get back in life. So that itself is the part of the standards that I set up for myself. The second part is being consistent. It's really big for me. So I have a list of habits which I re repeat on daily basis. Uh, some of them are like I need to do, <clears throat> I do X number of push-ups. I need to do that daily basis. Each time I put a kettle on, I do push-ups. This is what I call as the compound actions, which means one behavior is connected with another behavior, fueling my performance. So most people will click on the they'll click on the kettle and they will just sit around waiting for it to boil. Well, I don't. I use that time to do push-ups. And that I've been doing it for the last three to four years. And now I can hit about 40 to 50 push-ups during the time kettle is boiled. So it allows you to sustain that time and the strength in your physical body. I call them money accelerators. Your energy in your body and the physical strength, it fuels the strength and resilience to carry on working and performing to help you attract more value from people you serve. So consistent and focused efforts are really fundamental. 10 steps I need to do on a daily basis, whether on my social media stuff, whether it's serving my clients, one-to-ones, whatever it is you need to do in business. And Julie, I don't know your audiences, but if they're in, the, in this in, in any kind of businesses or solopreneurs, they'll probably resonate more with me than people who are in their jobs. Uh, but e either way, I think consistency is more important than in intensity of the effort. Uh, the third part of my effort building is uh, networking. So I, I build really good relations with people, even and I, and I just take one person at a time. So if I build one great new relationship with a person a day, 
if I reflect back, that's like 30 new people have come into my world who've never, ever seen me. And people go through the areas of liking someone, knowing someone and trusting them before they buy from them. So my job is to help them go through the speed of trust a little bit faster than most by adding and creating value in their journey. So I network with people. I build relationships and I do it minimum one new person a day. I meet a new person a day. And that could be even someone in a, in a coffee shop for that matter. It doesn't matter whether it's online or offline. Then uh, I will say I invest in myself in terms of uh, my own growth. I'm always seeking of, the, of my own blind spots. What is it that I don't know? You see, you know what you know, you don't know what you don't know, but what about I don't know what I don't know? So it's these areas, like I was on the, I was on the call the other day and I was working with, uh, with this really a seven-figure coach there. And uh, one of the things that he reflected back upon me was that because I haven't crossed that barrier, I think others have also not crossed that barrier and I can't charge that amount. So we were setting up something for 50,000 pound worth of product out there in the market. And as, and part of me was like, but 50,000? And I kept on thinking, reflecting on the people I'm working with, thinking that's a lot. But these guys were at seven figures and they said that's not a lot at all. So it's about knowing your own blind spots where you put those boundaries and how you break free from them is fundamental. Uh, in terms of other habits, I will say uh, time management. So you need to fit in the, 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 the prioritization and the time management aspects of your life. Uh, you need to know what things need to be done. If you're a, start with yourself. Um, I know I'm not a morning person, so I know I pick up the pace as the day goes along. But what practices the, that I need to put in place in the morning that allows me to perform better in the evening? That includes a little siesta during the day, right? So I've got a hot blood. I like to sleep in the day. And everyone's like, well, you can't sleep in the day. Well, I can get away with it. I sleep in the day. It just refreshes me half an hour. Bang, you have your nap and you're charged again. So knowing these, knowing your own self, self-awareness, your own body, your own mind, it's really important. Uh, I take ginseng as well. That I think that helps me, uh, like gets the blood going in the brain. It supports that function really well. Uh, so that's the self-care, exercise, scheduling, practices, part of thing. Uh, what else can I tell you in terms of being disciplined, holding myself accountable? Uh, a lot of people at the level of high performance or people who have that drive or hunger in them, yeah, they kind of drive themselves. They, they, there is this self-discipline that was always there, whether I'm in job or I'm working for myself. It's just there, right? And you can call it, it's a habit or it's something that your brain has worked out that that's the only way to seek approval is to perform. Whatever that combination has happened in your emotional and mental and psychological states, if it's worked for you, hold on to it. Don't let it go of those practices. The only thing you need to identify is that if that practice has got to a point that it's burning you out, you need to know the boundaries and when to say no to yourself. So I have some rules that I will only have like three meetings minimum a day and four meetings maximum a day. I will not have anything more than that because the fourth and the fifth person, they're not getting the best out of me anyway. So you might as well give and, and slot them in a way that it allows me to do my own thing, to catch up with my own self and, you know, refuel my own strength so I can keep performing. And, and, and the other rule I have is that I plan my week ahead always. Planning is the key for me. One of the key habits is planning. Uh, you can plan to be a millionaire. Can you believe it? It's called living life by design. So when you plan to do something, you, I know that I need to work 30 hours a week. It's a rule. That allows me to, actually, it's only 26 hours, the, the four hours I keep as buffer in case I need to cross that. The question is, if I want to double my incomes now, how do I double that without crossing my 30-hour barrier? Or even in lesser time. So that's when you start to ask a different question. And when you ask a different question, life is so beautiful. It shows you many ways of resolving new problem, right? So that's me, Julie, in a very uh, short snapshot. I hope this gives you and your audiences what they're looking for. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so refreshing, Sam, to hear you talk about the goal setting thing in a completely different way. I'm all about doing things holistically. And from what you're saying, it's clear that you have balance and you show people how they can create more balance in their life and, and more and more more happiness by the sound of it. 
as well as obviously hitting those um, targets that they have, whatever you like to call them. But I think that when we become the person that we want to become, we can do and have the things that we want to do and have. I know that's not very good English. Yeah. But, no, know. no, no. You spot on there. It's it's about not about what we do, but who we become. So when yeah. if you are a if you are a level five person, a level six or a seven problem will break you. But when you become a level eight person, then level six is not a problem. So it's your growth that makes you. They say you can either go through it or grow through it, and yeah. that's the point I'm making here. You know, grow through your challenges. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to be bigger than your problem, don't you? And always look for solutions okay. rather than focusing on the problem. Thank you so, so much, Sam. I've loved Thank hearing you. Thank you. Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. And for those of you that want to hear more about Sam, and I'm sure you do, then all you have to do is click on the links below this video and uh, check him out. Maybe, you know, send, send him a message and um, ask him a question. Anyway, it's really great to talk to you, Sam. Thank you ever so much awesome. for your, your gold. And thank you, everyone else, for watching. I really appreciate it. Please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for having me, Julie. Bye-bye.